Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. I'm recording so much today because I'm just having like a good emotional wave and um, I've talked about that actually in one of the videos I did today. Um, but the point is I'm like having a lot of energy still. Got probably about like two, three more videos left in me. And I wanted to talk perfumes, perfumes that I've been wearing because I haven't done one of these videos in a long time. I've kind of done the trays on here. The trays are cute, but honestly, I always end up, like I like forcing, if there's perfumes that I need to like use up or that I would like to use up, I like the tray because it's functional to get them used up, like to be like, this is what you're wearing. But as I declutter more of like what I didn't necessarily love in my collection, it's kind of getting cool because then it's really just about like, what am I in the mood for? Um, rather than having to like try using up perfumes, not that I, I, of course, still enjoy those perfumes that I'm trying to use up, or I try to, but the real point is I'm so moody when it comes to life in general and also just like my perfumes that it's nice to be able to reach and just reach for whatever in the moment and then kind of let you know what it is I've been reaching for. So the perfumes in here are an interesting mix of light and dark. It's almost half and half, um, almost half and half, but actually I have a couple more not darker, but like heavier perfumes because we've kind of been having a cold front here recently where I live, which is insane. The weather here has been nuts. It was about like we got like after winter, we got like one week of spring and then like two weeks of super hot, like summer like weather. And then it went back to like winter for a week, like cold, rainy. And then now it's completely back to like this spring sort of in between. And that's supposed to get hot, like summer hot like at the end of next week or the end of this week. So it's like the weather's kind of all over the place. And I think maybe that'll be reflected in my perfumes here. But um, I want to give you a sense of what I've been reaching for and talk about them. I pretty much love every single perfume I'm about to share with you. I really, really have been enjoying. Um, so this will kind of give you an idea of that. And yeah. Okay. So first up, Sierra's Revlon. Are you kidding me? This, ugh. Sexy 70s masterpiece. It's resin, it's smoke, it's incense, it's leather. It's actually though, it's amber, it's vanilla. There's Oris in this too. And um, mm, it's powdery and smoky and ambery. Oh, this stuff is sexy to me. Sorry, I had to moan a little bit. <laughs> this stuff is just so sexy to me. Um, this is not going to be for everyone. This is a very vintage profile, and I recognize that. But if you like vintage scents, um, if anything I described to you sounds good to you, like any of the notes I described or qualities, then try it. It's literally 13 bucks. This, I believe, is the 100%. I know there's an 80%, 100%, and 200%. This is just the standard 100%. And I love this stuff. I love this stuff so much. I reached for this. This is like a rainy day perfume for me. I reached for this, um, as soon as I, I found out it was going to rain, I was like, okay, we're wearing this today. So <clears throat> I'll still wear this in whatever weather, but I really love this. And this, it's giving me roller hair, like hair with the rollers, kind of like sleek push, not sleek, but like, you know, like kind of bouffant, push back like that. Um, oh, it's giving me suede. It's giving me... Oh, like vest and bell bottoms. It's, I love this stuff. This is Sierra by Revlon. Okay, let's talk, um, let's talk this one. I almost wore this today, but I actually wore this yesterday. And so I didn't reach for this today. I reached for something else. United Colors of Benetton Hot. This is the vintage formula. I'm not sure about the new formula. I heard they changed it around and a lot of people were really upset because apparently the reformulation's bad. I don't know because I wanted to try the vintage first. So maybe I'll get a new bottle after trying the vintage one and see what the difference is. Um, <coughs> my general take with reformulations and stuff is it really depends. It really depends on the nose, on the person. Sometimes people have very legitimate concerns with reformulations and like ruining the original essence of the perfume. And other times I think people just like to complain. Um, so I don't know. I don't know with this one, but this is the vintage so you can see my juice is darker. So some of the vanilla in this has started to turn. But this literally is 100% a dupe for Chanel's Allure. And this was like 13 bucks as well. Um, 
I didn't know that this was a dupe. Well, I didn't know that this was a dupe for Chanel Allure supposedly, but I had never smelled Ch Chanel Allure in person. I had thought that my mom wore that growing up. And then once I smelled it, I realized, yeah, for sure she did wear it growing up. But I hadn't smelled it in such a long time. And then I went to the mall and I smelled it. And I can literally confirm this smells freaking exactly the same. The exact same. <coughs> As Chanel's Allure. So it's like, to me, I don't know if it's peach or apricot, but it, to me it feels peachy. There's like this peachy sort of um, soapy, warm skin quality to me on here. There's woods in this too. Like I want to say there's like, ooh, what? I don't know what wood, but there's like, it's like a, there's a little woodiness in there. So there's some florals in here, but it's like a peachy, soft, warm skin scent. Like it feels warm to me. It feels warm. Um, warm, but clean and just sophisticated and elegant. Honestly, um, I've smelled two Chanel perfumes now. And like, I know people hype up Chanel and then, so there's some people who hate it. I really liked the two that I smelled, but I haven't smelled anything else. So I can't say on the rest of the range, but for me, um, Allure and Coco Mademoiselle were like, smelled really good when I smelled them in person. And Coco Mademoiselle shocked me because to be honest, like everyone wears that. That's like the most popular selling like women's set ever. So I was like, I don't know if I'll like this, if it'll be too basic for me or not that I can't like, like popular things, but you never know, right? Like, is it going to live up to the hype or not? I honestly think Coco Mademoiselle did, for me at least. Um, so maybe I'll get a bottle of that one day or I'll find like a, like a good clone. But I um, also want to smell the intense version though to compare them. But uh, this is totally a dupe for Chanel Allure and it smells so good and so affordable. You can still get vintage bottles on eBay um, or you could try out the new one. I don't know what the new one's like. So this is United Colors of Benetton Hot. Also, I need to go like blow my nose. <laughs> one second, you're going to see me walk to the kitchen. bother editing my, editing my videos these days just not my thing sorry <laughs> it's just it's too much time for me I like to just shoot and go but okay let's talk what else what's next let's talk this one this is Femme by Roaches this is another like when I say skin maybe the real quality is like maybe the the real what I mean to say is it's not that it smells like skin but it's like it's a perfume that really evolves on your skin, which to me is what good perfume does. Um, I really tr truly believe like spraying on paper really never does a perfume justice. It's, yeah, I don't know. Like if you really wanna know what it smells like, let it unfold on your skin with your chemistry. But this is Femme by Roches. And they designed this, this was, a, so this is a reproduction of a vintage scent. This comes from wartime, World War II in France. And they wanted it to smell like a woman's delicate skin. And to me, this is spicy, ambery. I want to say there's like floral. There's definitely a lot of florals in here. Like I want to say there's jasmine in here because I've there's either jasmine or tuberose because I've layered this with another scent that I'm, I'll show you guys today. And it worked really, really well. It just brought out the florals in it. But... There's plum at the top of this. There's cinnamon. I want to say there's like a nice. There's a, there's a whole lot going in here. So if you really want to look at all the notes, I would go to Fragrantica. But this is a sort of powerful, sexy scent. Like not everyone's going to like this. And it is a vintage profile. My friend Mimi, when I wore this, I was like, smell me. I smell like a, like that I'm wearing one of my old lady perfumes. And I say that lovingly, by the way, of course. Perfume has no age. And also there's nothing wrong with being an old lady. Like I love older women like I'm so excited to become an older woman so I say that very lovingly but I was like yeah I kind of smell like an old lady today um and she was like you know what this smells like one of uh, my other friend Nathan he said it smelled like like a kind of like a like a thrift shop and Mimi was like you smell like one of those old like vintage lamps with fringe on it and I thought that was so funny but so fitting like it's so like it's a very like old uh, old sort of perfumery type of scent, but I really appreciate it. Sometimes there is cumin in this and a lot of people don't like that. Sometimes the cumin can be a little much, so I have to be in the, the mood for this. Um, but that's why with this one, uh, I don't overspray this one. I'll go, I'll just go pulse points on this one. So I'll do wrists, I'll do behind the ears, and then hit usually my decolletage with like a spray or two. Um, I really liked this scent on first sniff. And then uh, you can see now I've put it done in it. I wore it a lot in uh, like the middle of winter and then I stopped wearing it 
because I just kind of got the cumin note was getting a little bit much for me because again it, it can be a little much I could see how it could be a little much but then I came back to it when it got cold again and oh I've been liking this a lot and I layered it I guess this will be a segue into the next perfume I layered it with a little bit of this which is like my new love and when I say love I mean love like this is a perfume the next the next, this one, and there's three more, but two of the three are like perfumes for life for me. This is definitely one of those. This is Juicy Couture's original EDP. This isn't Viva La Juicy. I could die. I could die. I love this stuff. It is like, ugh, people have described this as like a Beverly Hills mom perfume, but also like a young virginal perfume. Like, to me, this perfume literally, you could, you could wear this to like a formal vet, but you could wear this to a goth freaking grunge event like there's something so universal about this perfume to me like this feels like such an every day reach to me um but i know that's not going to be for everyone i love tuberos and i love florals if you don't like florals especially white florals stay the frick away from this but oh my god for me i could die <coughs> in the top we're supposed to be like watermelon like hyacinth and marigold i honestly do get a little bit of the marigold Marigold kind of gives things just like this sort of earthy, stanky flair that I really like. It's very, very subtle though. And what I love about this is the, this is a perfume that is sweet in a subtle way. Like there's a touch of sweetness to it, but in a really subtle, gorgeous, natural way. Because uh, after it comes down from the floral heart of like tuberose, uh, I want to say maybe there's gardenia in this too. After it sits on your skin, it start, this is another one of those perfumes that really develops well with your skin. It has these sort of caramelly, vanillic base notes, but not cloying and not overpowering. This is one that people have, I've had some people really like it and others not like it. Um, maybe, maybe it was user error because I did overspray it that day, um, but my friend Jasmine said this gave her a headache, whereas my... <laughs> Other, not my friend, um, one of my coworkers who I actually knew coworker I had just met, she was like, oh my God, you smell so good. Can I ask what you're wearing? Like, I want to buy it. I told her, baby, Juicy Couture ADP. And she was like, thank you so much. You smell so good. Like, I, I can't wait to get some. For me, I love this shit. Like, this is a new magnum opus for me in my collection. And it was so affordable. It's like 30 bucks. <clears throat> As you can see, I don't really like I mean, I guess maybe not as you can see, because the next one I paid for like, well, it was still under under $100. I usually don't pay more than $100 for fragrances. Speaking of this next one, yeah, this one was about, I want to say 80 something. I was able to find a deal for it for a 3.4 ounce. This is another perfume, love of life, hypnotic poison. Everyone talks about it. And I'm so glad I got to experience this and I get to experience this. When I first smelled it, I didn't really get it. I, like, I liked it, but I was like, I'm not getting it. Like, I'm not getting it the way that I think other people are getting it. And I really, really love Dior Addict. So I was like, I feel like Addict is better. Like, I don't get why people love this one. No, this and Addict are at the same level, and they're up here, okay? Like, master perfumery in for me. And I do tend to like, like, warmer, uh, like, more complex scents, so maybe that's why. But I understand the Play-Doh and root beer comparisons, but it, I love it even more. What this this is also another skin developing. You're you're noticing a theme here. I love scents that develop well on the skin, that aren't linear, and that play with your chemistry nicely. This is like an almondy, sandalwoody, vanillic, spicy scent. I wore this on a date on Monday. Ugh. It's so sexy, but warm and like comforting too. Famously, this is Adele's signature scent. I mean, I don't know if she rocks the EDT or the EDP. This is the EDT of Hypnotic Poison. I also recently got Pure Poison. I want to get the original poison, but I also think because I like the EDT so much, I want to experience the EDP as well and see like, what's the difference in the concentrations or the formulas or, you know, the, like, what is it? But this is freaking awesome. I know everyone rants about it and you're probably like tired of hearing about it, but it's so good. This is perfumery at its finest. And 
I guess we're doing a theme, perfumery at its finest. Another one of my favorite Magnum Opus scents, Obsession by Calvin Klein. And this was a 3.4 ounce tester. Um, I've put my Olympia cap on it because it didn't come with a cap, which I didn't know wasn't going to come with a cap. Because in the pictures on Fragrance Net, even if it's a tester, it usually will show you cap or no cap. And it had a cap on it, but it didn't come with one. The point is, actually, I think it looks really sophisticated and refined with this on it. This is Jane Fonda's signature scent. And when I first smelled this, I really wasn't that crazy about it. I was like, okay, like, we're just going to, like, wear this a lot in the winter, overspray it. Now this is one of my favorite perfumes. It's spicy but green in the opening. And this is another sort of vintagey profile. It's interesting because it's vintagey, but it still feels modern and wearable today. Definitely vintage profile. Um, definitely like old school perfumery, but I really do think this is still wearable today. And again, this evolves so nicely on the skin. It has this ambery, uh, I think there's like synthetics of it, obviously, because this is the reformulation by Coty. <coughs> Amber, civet, vanilla in the base with like green notes and spices. I'm sure there's other things going on in here, but this is like sex to me. And then just imagine how sexy Jane Fonda is for her to rock this as her signature scent. Like that's a sexy woman, sexy, mature lady. Again, the theme of today's video is mature women are freaking sexy and we love older women. We love mature women. We love older profile perfumes. Um, I love this stuff. And um, actually with this, when I first started wearing this, I actually got a lot of compliments from people I was not expecting. Um, I wore this out to the bars and then we were walking back. One of my friend's friends who was with us, he was like, who smells so good? It was me. So um, people like this, at, at least. Not everyone's gonna like this and get it, but I think boys really like this. Or if you have an, ex like, if you have an appreciation for old school per perfumery, um, like French people really like this. Like my friends Margot and Massimo have given me compliments when I wear this. And they appreciate all my really complex scents too. Like they really like Lulu by Cacharel, which I really can't say anyone else has ever complimented me on. So um, yeah, I love Obsession. I love Margot and Massimo. I love my friends. Okay, let's talk about this last one. This isn't like um, a perfume of life for me, but it's one that I've really come to appreciate. And this was my scent of the day today. This is one I'm really coming to appreciate now as we head into a slightly warmer weather. This feels perfect right now in spring. I feel like it just didn't really make sense in winter for me. I think you could wear it in winter, but I think maybe I needed the EDP for winter. And after starting to really like this now, I do want to try the EDP. Um, that's next on my list. But this is a 1.7 ounce of Ara by Mugler, the Eau de Toilette. And this is like a green strawberry vanilla milkshake. Like I get strawberry in here. I, there's, I think there's watermelon too. So like there's like yummy, juicy fruits. Um, but not like deep berries, like yummy, juicy, light summer fruits and, um, vanilla. It's, it's by far a vanilla scent. It feels youthful and girly to me, like very playful. Oh, I'm going to respray some more actually. <laughs> very, very playful. Oh, so good actually. And just like yummy and fruity and addicting. But there is that touch of weirdness that all Mugler perfumes have. This in, comes in the form of like the green notes in this, which is, I think a rhubarb which I never really knew what rhubarb was before. And I'm just guessing that's what I'm smelling. That's that kind of weird, unique twist to it. Cause it's not a yummy, like it's not, I mean, it is yummy. It's so good. Like I crave this, it's juicy, but it's not like a standard, like Bath and Body Works fruity scent. <coughs> There's a real complexity to it that I think comes in the rhubarb and the green notes, but mm, I really like this stuff and I really want to try, well, I think at first I wasn't sure I was going to replace my bottle of this. I think I will, but I want to try the EDP first and see if I like the one more and then see if I need both. But I do really like this stuff. And um, are you kidding me? This is the freaking cutest bottle I've ever seen in my life. So cute. Okay, that concludes my perfumes. I've been talking for 20 minutes now. That con concludes what I've genuinely been reaching for lately in my collection. Um, I'll probably be reaching for these for a little bit while longer because the weather is like still a little chilly this week. And then once it starts to warm up, maybe I'll reach for more of my lighter perfumes. But 
This is what I've been rocking lately with the weird weather we've been having in um, NorCal. So I hope this was fun for you guys. Let me know, what have you been wearing? Are there any perfumes in my uh, collection that you wanna try? Are there any that you maybe did try, you loved or you didn't love? Um, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next perfume video, <laughs> the next video in general. Okay, bye guys.